Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You ever hear about those things that claim they'll ruin your childhood because they're either conspiracy theories or subliminal messages about your favorite TV shows? Or are you a kid who loves a lot of the jokes from your favorite TV show, but they actually might not be as innocent as they seem? Well, I am so sorry for what I'm about to do. Kids, everybody was one of those at some point. Simpler times, the times of being scolded by your parents for watching too much TV or playing too many video games. Sometimes your parents wouldn't even let you watch a show for whatever reason. I know somebody who actually didn't even watch my favorite show when they were growing up. My best friend also didn't have cable, and for the longest time, the only way he was able to watch Spongebob growing up was on DVD. Recently, he even told me that he thought that episode 2, Reef Blower, was the pilot because the actual pilot, episode 1, Help Wanted, wasn't on the season 1 DVD. I know the reason why they did this, but sometimes the stupid decisions Nickelodeon makes with Spongebob gives the general audience misleading information. Or if you were a kid born in the 2010s onwards, you'd be reprimanded for being on a phone or tablet too much. But regardless, we've all been in that situation where we hear something that's not really kid-friendly and after we say, do, or talk about what we saw, our parents punish us for it. And sometimes it's beyond obvious what wasn't appropriate, but other times the subliminal message just flew right over our heads, but we still thought the joke was funny, and we still love it for the simple reason because, well, it's funny. And when people get older and learn more things, they look back at the jokes they saw and realize what the joke was supposed to be a reference to. Some people felt their childhood ruined when they found this out, and other people, like me, saw it as a clever way to work that mature joke into the show. And today, I'm going to talk about adult jokes from Spongebob. Before we get into it, I have a little story about how I came to know the true meanings of these jokes. I took a class about video cameras and filming skits in high school. During one of the classes near the beginning of the semester, we were talking about a new season of a TV show generally coming out from fall to spring, and when it's summer, they don't premiere a lot of new episodes due to kids doing other things. During this talk, I brought up how I've seen every episode of Spongebob at that time. And I still have. At this point, they started talking about a lot of the mature jokes from the show, and that was basically how it gained the adult fan base it has today. Not only was the setting of the show already unique, not only were the characters and episodes funny, but the mature jokes, whether they're subtle or obvious, is something that seasons 1, 2, and 3 are remembered for today. And it's one of the reasons why everybody's not so fond of most, if not all, of the seasons after the Spongebob Squarepants movie. It's not the only reason, of course, but it is still one of the reasons. I also made up a couple of rules for this discussion today. The two most common types of mature humor are the adult jokes I've been talking about and dark humor. Today we're not going to be talking about the darker moment. For example, in episode 89, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4, when Squidward is tiny and Patrick is holding him in his fist, Squidward says, I wonder if a fall from this height would be enough to kill me. That is more of a suicidal comment which is a topic that is very sensitive and more dark than funny depending on how it's implemented. So topics like death or torture are not going to be covered today. Maybe some other day, but not today. Everything else is fair game. This next rule might come as a bit of a surprise depending on who you're talking to, but I did some research and there are actually way more of these jokes than I remember. So for today, I won't be going over every single adult joke used in the show. I'll probably finish this topic sometime in the future, but for today, I'll be going over a select few. Finally, if you don't like this topic because it comes with that so-called ruin your childhood theme, then stop listening right now. Even though I learned the true meaning of these jokes, that never changed my love for the show. The comedy is one of the main reasons people watch Spongebob, why it became so popular. When I learned the true meaning of these jokes, I thought the parallel for them was pretty clever and it made me appreciate the writing even more. It shows how the Spongebob writers have never been afraid to put more mature jokes in a kid's cartoon like this. What a great time the 90s and 2000s were. With that all out of the way, let's get into it. Let's start off with a few general adult jokes that would be seen at least semi-frequently throughout the show, the kind you wouldn't really think about unless somebody brings it up to you. First up, the Krusty Krab. At first glance, it seems like a stereotypical fast food restaurant with no drive through but a closer look shows that it's the same shape as a New England lobster trap. I wasn't really sure if this was mature, but after thinking about it, I can kinda see it. 
The lobster traps can be bad because of how harmful it can be to lobsters. Also, this part might be a bit of a stretch, but maybe it was shaped like this to turn the tables and trap other sea creatures. Yes, Mr. Krabs is the owner and he's a crab, but both crabs and lobsters are crustaceans. Another example is the characters are sometimes shown naked. This is inappropriate for kids in real life, but to me personally, I always felt like there was a bit of an exception to this kind of rule for this show in particular. For example, in the Fairly Odd Parents, whenever a character was shown completely naked, there was always some kind of censorship. But on SpongeBob, there were several times where the characters were shown naked, but there was little to no actual censorship. Now, yes, I know that this was because the normal characters in the Fairly Odd Parents are supposed to look like humans, despite the huge heads and tiny bodies, and in SpongeBob, most of the characters are not shaped like humans. It's not that big a deal, but it's just something I noticed. Speaking of which, the next hidden message I want to mention is the name of the town itself. Bikini Bottom. The second word, bottom, refers to the fact that the city's at the bottom of the ocean, but I think I made the hidden message of the town's name clear just with the emphasis I put on Bikini Bottom. How you doing so far? Like it? If so, great. If not, I'm surprised you're still listening. Now let's move on to some jokes from actual episodes. Let's start off with an episode from season one. In episode 13, Pickles, during the scene in Spongebob's house where everything was screwed up, Spongebob wore his underwear on his head and his nose sticking out in his underwear. It almost looks as if it's his wiener. There's actually a couple other kinds of jokes involved around this topic. In episode 93, as seen on TV from season 3, Spongebob's nose sticks out from the ground and Spongebob told Mr. Krabs that Squidward said he could help by burying himself. Similar to Pickles, it almost bears a resemblance to a wiener. There was even a deleted line where Mr. Krabs said, That better be your nose, boy! This was cut because the wiener reference would have been way too obvious. In episode 36, Texas from season 1, when Patrick gets an idea, Spongebob says Patrick's genius is showing, and Patrick starts to panic and puts his hands over his crotch as if he wet his pants. This next point is not exactly about wieners, but wieners instead. In episode 288, Krusty Dogs from season 7, Spongebob makes the hot dog out of Krabby Patty meat. Throughout the episode, characters have often used the term wieners when talking about this new menu item, Krusty Dogs. When Mr. Krabs goes overboard with promoting them, Spongebob and Squidward work together to get rid of the wieners, and Squidward makes a comment about Mr. Krabs' whole wiener thing blowing right up in his face, which gave Spongebob an idea of having a Krusty Dog explode and splatter meat everywhere. Speaking of Season 7, there's another quite blatant reference from this season. In episode 265, The Play's The Thing, from season 7, Spongebob makes a balloon animal of Squidward when he thought that Squidward wasn't at his post, but the balloons he used to make that balloon Squidward bear a striking resemblance to condoms. Despite that, I still thought they were just regular balloons, like what a clown would use to make balloon animals with. While a series of events like this is very much like a typical Spongebob episode, I think people overlook the fact that Spongebob just had all those condoms conveniently on his person. Now that I've shown that the later seasons aren't completely deprived from adult jokes, let's move on to another later season, Season 6. In Episode 233, Overbooked from Season 6, Spongebob was trying to juggle Patrick's birthday, Sandy's presentation, and Mr. Krabs' Build-It-Yourself telescope all at once. He needs to get a birthday cake for Patrick, but he gets a cake that says, Sorry about the scabies. The scabies are a contagious disease involving burrowed mites that can cause rashes and make adult skin crawl. Kids wouldn't know this because it's a sexually transmitted disease, or STD for short. Health class is over, everybody. Next up is one of the most notorious adult jokes from the modern seasons. In episode 401, First Year Bubble from season 10, Mr. Krabs was washing a boat wearing pearl shorts and dancing to music, and you can see how tight the shorts were. Spongebob cried because he was sad about not having his license or owning a boat, but Mr. Krabs thought he cried because Spongebob saw him wearing pearl shorts. But I've talked about the modern seasons enough. Don't worry, I'll come back to them. Now it's time to go back to the cornucopia of older humor in Spongebob, seasons 1, 2, and 3. Starting off in most people's favorite season, season 2, one of the most notorious adult jokes in the show is from episode 66, Gary Takes a Bath from season 2. In an attempt to get Gary to take a bath, he paints the bathtub to look like a treasure chest. He takes out bars of soap and says they are doubloons and then says, don't drop them, to Gary. 
This is a reference to the infamous prison joke of not dropping the soap. As a kid, I thought Spongebob meant do not drop doubloons because they are treasure. Regardless, I still laugh at this scene every time I watch it. This is one of the most well-known mature jokes in the show. Almost every time I see a top 10 adult jokes in kids shows list online, this scene appears in those lists more times than not. Continuing with another example from this season, episode 54, Pre-Hibernation Week from season 2, has another great scene. When Sandy is sandboarding, she whips by a couple and burns their clothes away. The guy is shown on a kid's tricycle wearing kid's clothes, holding a paddle ball and lollipop, and says the famous, uh, I can explain, line. He's shown again later when Sandy lifts up houses to look for Spongebob, looking the same, and says the same line. I just thought it was funny and didn't think much of it as a kid, but nowadays it seems as if he has some kind of secret fetish for kids stuff and it was accidentally exposed for the first time. Now I don't know if this is actually the case, but if it is... Why did he wear those kids clothes underneath his heavy coat in the first place, and how did his skis turn into a tricycle? Oh right, I forgot. The Spongebob Squarepants movie, the swan song of the entire Spongebob series that takes place at the very end of the show. Everybody loves the scene where Spongebob and Patrick eat dozens upon dozens of triple gooberberry sunrises and start acting weird. In actuality, this is a kid-friendly parallel for drinking alcohol and getting drunk. I mean, hell, that whole scene takes place in a bar. How did I not even see it earlier? I don't know, but oh god, I love knowing what it truly means. What you may not know is that this was brought back. In episode 451, called The Cops from season 11, Patrick stumbled into the police station after having too many goofy goobers again, like I did this one time I went to a bar in college. Wait, or was it that one time I was at a college bar? I don't even remember. The police lady lets Patrick sleep it off in the shell. For the rest of the episode, Patrick was shown ice cream crazy and was shown drunk off ice cream and a little bit of donuts at the very end. Let's end it off with more jokes from season 3. In episode 102, Chocolate with Nuts from season 3, when Spongebob and Patrick see a billboard for barnacle chips, Spongebob says they're not delicious, but Patrick says, NOT THE WAY I USE THEM, which implies that he's doing something with those chips to make them taste better. But what is he doing with the chips? In episode 84, My Pretty Seahorse, when Spongebob parks Mystery in front of the Krusty Krab, two surfer fish come up, one of them is named Scooter, and they think Mystery is a new kitty ride. Scooter couldn't find the coin slot, but he presumably puts the coin in Mystery's ass, and she kicks him, and he explodes. The last but not least episode we're talking about today is episode 98, Rockabye Bival from season 3. The entire episode focuses on Spongebob and Patrick raising a baby scallop as parents. The whole episode is full of references to married couples raising a child as if they were actually a married couple themselves. These two fish, one of them named Nan, wondered how a sponge and a starfish gave birth to a scallop, all of the hairy and shirtless jokes, this scene where it looks like they'll be sleeping next to each other only for it to show Spongebob's two top mattresses crushing Patrick, the parts where they argue, and the ending where Junior, the scallop, is all grown up and leaves, and Patrick ends the episode by saying, Let's have another. This episode is wildly accurate with how married couples raise a baby. But none of that has aged in the slightest, so that goes to show how well Spongebob has always worked. Especially compared to modern day Nickelodeon shows. <coughs> but when you think about it, this, along with most of everything else I talked about today, shows how well the series can interlace adult jokes with its own clever sense of humor, which is one of the many factors that makes Spongebob so timeless. And other than that, I think that it shows no matter the quality of the episode, I'd say that the Spongebob writers still deserve respect and credit for being able to find all these creative ways to slip in all these mature jokes pretty cleverly and almost seamlessly, which, again, most if not all shows these days on the network just can't really seem to do as well as this show could. And that should do it for today. I know I haven't talked about every adult joke in this show, but I'll go back to this topic at some point in the future. If any of you already knew what I was talking about, but never felt it ruined what made this show a part of your childhood and what made it so great, then that's really good to hear. But if any of this information did ruin your childhood, 
I am so sorry.